Hello there, YouTube. I am Wheelchair21, and today we'll be doing a Let's Build. It is the first volume wave of the Duo Drew Mini Plus set, which consists of two pieces for the Eagle, one part for the Shark, one part for the Lion, and another for the Giraffe. As you can see, I laid out each of the parts, and that'll be kind of like the way to explain when we're moving on to the next piece of the set. And as I'm starting on the head of the Eagle, as well as the main torso and body for the Eagle, as well as the Mecha, you can see I've already applied the stickers, and in future parts, you'll see that I've tried to apply some of the parts to themselves and put them together just to make it a lot easier to fit my 15 minute limit when it comes to small model kits or small Lego sets, just because I want to keep it at a reasonable pace for people to want to enjoy this as well as view it. Now, I don't build everything on camera like you've seen in other videos because if it's a repeated piece, like, say, the opposite limb, like, say, the left arm or the left leg, I don't even show it because it's the same build. There's practically nothing different between the two. So that's probably one easy thing about model kits in general if you're building, like, humanoid figures. Now, as for Juoger, the whole box design is pretty damn nice. I actually adore it. I just don't like the use of, like, the pixel details throughout the entire body. I find it just very lazy. I thought they could have done more uh, things to add different accents and features to make them stand out a lot more than just being, well, almost video game-like characters, even though this is supposed to be about actual animals and other such. I've still yet to actually start watching the series. I kind of been waiting to just get up to the first five or seven episodes, then at least try to marathon it but i'm so behind so if you've never gotten mini pla i recommend that this should be your first now i'm not saying if you don't like juoja that you should still get it i'm just saying that if you wanted to do it do it with this because this build is so simple you barely need the instructions to really pay attention to how you need to build this piece because a lot of the mini plas tend to use a lot of the same port systems and pieces when you have to add in their connectors where you would like plug in a limb say like an arm or a head or a leg which are those little black pieces on the side other than that i gotta say i like that mini plot i've always kind of stayed the same they kind of use the same ports they're kind of their own kind of zord builder features however not all kits can kind of mix and match together so it's not as you know the deluxe american line for mecha Whereas, you know, we can pretty much shove any mecha onto a mecha and make it something new. But right here, I enjoy it. I like it. I think that it's one thing that makes me always coming back to this line is that it's a nice, highly articulated minifigure that you get to assemble yourself as well as you can either alternate by painting or just keeping it natural like it is with the stickers. I normally tend to use paint, however, I'm not, you know, seeing the reason to paint this one excessively due to the fact that it's just a very minimal stickering, and it's not different compared to past releases where, like, say, an entire limb is a different color. So now we'll be working on, well, the arms, which right here, as you can see, this piece right there is one of the hardest pieces because... If you put it in backwards, like I did originally, which you don't see in this take, it's kind of hard to take the part out. You actually need to like have a like small screwdriver to take and pull out the piece because it's kind of an airtight lock where you just kind of push it together and then it rotates in the joint once it's locked and sealed. And I kind of don't like that with these figures sometimes is you need to put a bit of force and put the parts on each other because I feel like it'll either crack or break the plastic. Or, in general, it'll just get too loose over time because it doesn't use, like, uh, what Gundam kits use where they have the actual hubcaps and stuff that are a nice soft plastic material that try to keep everything um, together. Now, I'm probably calling them wrong because I don't really give a rat's ass what those pieces are actually called. But right here, this does take a little bit of work and finesse. Now, if it wasn't on the camera, it'd be a whole lot easier to do. But, like I said, um, in previous takes or in other videos, my biggest problem tends to be trying to keep everything in frame due to the fact I use old school, like, iPads, 
as well as big bulky cameras. So trying to keep stuff in frame tends to be a problem for me while also trying to work on the product at hand. So with this arm practically being finished, we're going to most likely just skip ahead right to the construction of the actual head to our freaking mecha. Now this part right here is pretty cool. I like this little totem piece part, but my biggest problem is that this little cylinder part that features the face doesn't really stay in well to the crown, to the actual head that you actually have to sort of assemble it off camera to get the sides of the crown, to get the front piece to lock in place, and to keep it right where you need it. And because of how like far back it's pushed into the thing, you don't really get to see the face, as well as these little red pieces right here are easy to lose, so it's best you try to get those into the entire um, front end of the mask as soon as possible, or helmet. Honestly, the first one was a little harder to get in, the second one a lot easier, and like I said, see, it's really hard to see the face. It's just kind of glossed over, you can't really notice it, just due to how shadowy it is. You're going to need, like, a front light to just try to display it. But I gotta say, I like that it's on a swivel joint because it does give it a little bit more articulation. A shark is the next piece because it's the actual waist. It's the lower legs, or I should say the upper legs and waist. And these parts right here are very, very simple. I actually didn't realize how simple the construction for the shark would be. This is probably the second of the set that is the easiest to build. Maybe, maybe yeah, I'd say. Almost every, every piece is kind of easy, except for the line. The line has a little bit more to it. It's a little bit more cumbersome. It has a few more extra parts. But the, the shark, the eagle, and the giraffe are too damn easy. But there's one thing I gotta say is I kind of forgot a part on the back of the shark's heads. There's like a little small hub port. And I didn't even notice it because it was just so trivial at the time that it wasn't until I finished building the entire thing that I remembered to stick those parts in, which is actually kind of good for me because at least with this set, you can easily just kind of insert certain parts to the port that it needs to be lodged into without having to deconstruct the entire figure. So the top part of the legs is, I think, the top of the entire box form when it's in cube. And this practically is your entire waist joint. I mean, it's so cheap at times, just looking at how thin it is, but due to the fact it kind of gets covered up by the secondary shark face when it forms up, you kind of just don't notice how bad it is. And the back, one solid piece, which becomes the top of the shark with the fin. I honestly like this part. I like the stickers for it because some of them have like this nice metallic gleam. Not all of them tend to keep this weird metallic -y, uh coating for their stickers, but I find it really nice. And as I said, th this front part here with the shark face actually helps cover a lot of the gap area. All right, so the legs are pretty simple. It relies a lot though on its black stickers and black accent pieces, which easily can go on to the figure. The accent parts kind of are the hardest when you feature it in the main of the line, when it's in lion form, which you barely get to see in this video due to the fact that the way you um, construct the f figure is it relies heavily on making the actual solid mecha itself rather than its individual parts. As you can see, just a little bit of black on the inside of the main, and we go right to the three. Now, this part right here, a lot of people hate. Um, people tend to really just, for some reason, don't like that it's one solid sticker. I can kind of agree with that because there's always been some type of mini plot throughout every year that just does one sticker. It covers up, like, the hollow-sided, like, honeycomb-esque piece of the plastic part. I don't know why it happens. It just does. But the foot, I actually like it how it's on a swivel and hinge joint. As well as, I also find it interesting that there's some kind of little ball joints inside. I don't really know what it's for at this t time. I'm not sure if it's even a very trivial part to the actual lion's mechanic itself. But I feel like it's going to be something we need for future attachments or future combinations. At this time, I can only just guess that 
it's going to be for maybe the final combination or the next combination for whatever the jewelers have. But right now, that little in inner piece, I don't know what it's for. The knee guard is one of the things that a lot of people are complaining about on the internet. Is that they don't like how this mecha kind of becomes a straight up parts former. And what people don't understand is when you deal with like combiners in the Transformers line or mechas. That you take a part off and put it into another piece. People tend to like absolutely hate that. Because they say it doesn't feel organic to the way that the pieces should lodge and lock into place and interface and I kind of understand it. it just for me I would say it's a small little model kit so maybe they had to cut some corners the giraffe which is your final piece isn't even a part of the mecha it's a weapon it's a goddamn cannon as you can see I painted the barrel of the giraffe with a Gundam marker uh, it's just the basic silver for the metallic accents as for the actual body, though, it relies a lot on metallic stickering, which you put on after you kind of assemble it. And the assembly is really rather easy. Like I said early on, it is probably the easiest piece to make, or the easiest part to build. And it's actually one of my favorites when it compacts down, as you'll see uh, a little further in the video. Now this part here, when you're attaching the head, I actually put it on backwards. You kind of can see that in this take right here so there's gonna be a part where I transition and it looks completely fine <laughs> luckily I caught it just at the nick of time before I fully lodged the place in there actually it wouldn't lock in right until I actually reset the head and luckily that was like my clue to you know fix the entire thing <laughs> so I fixed my mistake I'm working on the like probably the last piece which is the bottom half of the giraffe and now, this is where you'll see how it combines and compacts down and compresses. It kind of reminds me of the old school, like, cot folding chairs for kids and teens that almost everyone in the 90s kind of had. And I think they still make them even today, but I just rarely see them. I left the last piece of stickering, you know, there because it's pretty simple. I mean, it's just a little exclamation point on the side of the box, which a lot of people tend to make jokes that Nintendo made this giraffe just because of all the Mario references you can make out of it. And I also left the little hubcaps or the little ports for its neck. I call them hubcaps because they look like hubcaps. They're not really, they're just, you know, a piece to keep the neck from kind of falling apart on you. But it's rather simple. I, I like it. It's adorable. It's cool. It's probably, like I said, my favorite uh, transformable cube. I kind of hope they make a future one that's kind of like a snake that dimensions the dice, like that weird piece in the old uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dungeon Dice game where it's like a giant L-shaped kind of thing. But I doubt they'll do that. So we pretty much are finished here with the bazooka. I'm just going to put it on. And, well, the review for this is going to be coming up in about a week or so. I want it to be the end of the month to close out the entire month of reviews. So you can follow me here or over at HeroTaco.com, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll see you next time with Charge. Thank you.